Welcome, everybody. It's so amazing that this day is here and all these amazing, wonderful faces and people are in this room. I can't thank you enough for coming. And I, I can't thank Francisco and Kelly and, and Kem and Leanne and all of our colleagues and funders for enabling this day to happen. We'll be talking further throughout the course of the next two days. But for now, I just want to uh, go through a little bit of information about how Quigger and Kirk first got together. So for those of you who aren't familiar with our work, uh, those of you who are more from, here from uh, friends of, of the Kirk uh, group and we haven't had an opportunity to meet yet, um, we are a national multi-sector and multidisciplinary organization, Quigger is, and our overarching uh, vision is to promote innovation and excellence in rehabilitation in the context of HIV and also to promote a comprehensive approach to rehabilitation in the context of HIV. And in order to do that, we need to have a wide range of people joining us. And so you will see the, our Quigger members and partners come not only from across Canada, but other countries. All of you who are here from other countries today are, are most included. And it includes groups such as but not limited to people living with HIV and other related conditions, community-based HIV and disability organizations, national associations of health professionals, individual clinicians, researchers and educators, private business, and the employment sector. And just before we get started using the word rehabilitation throughout the next two days, this is just a general stab at what we mean by rehabilitation, although we recognize that it has many different meanings in various contexts. So for the purposes of our, our work, Quigger broadly defines rehabilitation as a dynamic process that enhances body structure and function, activity and social participation to improve the overall health and well-being of individuals. And there's lots of variations on that, and we're open to continuing that conversation at all times. And the field of HIV and rehabilitation is emerging. It's also evolving, and it's growing. Evidenced today by the wonderful group that's here today. And we're continually adapting the ch to the changing needs of people living with HIV and the environment. And that's happened over the past 15 years. And I hope that for tomorrow, a lot of that will be discussed and where the field has come from and where the field is going. We will be discussing this further at our annual general meeting tomorrow morning at 11.30 here at, here at the same, same room. So we look forward to having a chance to discuss a bit more about Quigger's work specifically and our AGM and the, the vision of the past and the future tomorrow. So thank you very much. I'm going to hand it over now to Kelly, who's going to take us forward from here. Okay, so I'm going to give a little bit of a historical perspective of how we actually ended up here today. And it started back in 2008. Quigger conducted a national scoping study, actually it was international scoping study, to identify what the key research priorities were in HIV and rehabilitation. And I had an opportunity to work with them on this, as well as Annette Wilkins, who is over there as well. And we conducted a literature review, followed by focus groups and one-on-one -on -one interviews with 28 stakeholders, including people living with HIV, educators, clinicians, policy stakeholders, researchers, uh, with expertise in HIV and rehabilitation. And we asked individuals, what are the key emerging issues in HIV and rehabilitation? And in your opinion, what do you think of the key research priorities in order to move the field forward? We analyzed all the data using a content analysis approach and then convened as a one-day face-to-face meeting where we really prioritized all of the content and the priorities that came through this consultation. And from that emerged this framework on HIV and rehabilitation research that provided a future plan. And it included uh, content areas but also methodological approaches that could be used uh, and potential outcomes that could happen for practice and policy. From that, we teased out six key priorities, which are the ones that you see up here. Disability and episodic disability. So that, what are the health challenges that people might be experiencing, and how might these fluctuate or change over time? 
concurrent health conditions aging with HIV, and that means aging with HIV at any stage across the lifespan. HIV in the brain, so this encompasses cognitive and mental health. Labor force and income support issues, which we know Quigger is very actively engaged with and has partnered with a number of different episodic and chronic uh, type of illness groups. Access to an effective rehabilitation, which is a key focus of Quigger's work right now in trying to improve access to rehabilitation services. And we're always looking for new evidence to help demonstrate the effectiveness of these interventions. And lastly, a topic near and dear to my heart, as well as Richard Harding, is the idea around measurement and really having the tools that are valid and reliable in order to demonstrate the screening, but also capture changes in disability and health when they occur. So these are the six key research priorities, and they actually are the foundation for the forum. If you look at the agenda, we've allocated six research evidence panel sessions, and they align with each of these research priorities. So given that these were established in 2008, now, years later, we thought it was time to figure out what's been done in these areas. Many people in the room have been very actively involved in research and program evaluation in addressing these research priorities. And this led to uh, our application for the CIHR dissemination event uh, in which to now translate the research findings in this area. Now, when we had these research priorities, uh, back in 2006, Will Chegwin and his physiotherapist uh, counterpart, Emma, uh, contacted Quigger. They were coming over for the International AIDS Conference in 2006 in Toronto. And they had sought out Quigger developed a partnership with Elise, and that was the first time we really had a chance to meet. I remember outside on a patio and really start talking about some of the similarities that existed around, among uh, people living with HIV in the UK and in Canada, and some of the issues around access to rehabilitation services. So what is Kirk? Well, this was really, I think, the foundational piece of it. Kirk stands for Canada, UK, HIV and Rehabilitation Research Collaborative. It was founded back in 2009 with an initial meeting that happened in London. And it's essentially an international research collaborative that includes a number of different stakeholders here with an interest in HIV and rehabilitation research. As mentioned, I think it started back with that first meeting with Will and Emma and Quigger at AIDS 2006 and discussing some of the similar issues around the challenges accessing rehab services, social participation, income and employment, and some of the concurrent health conditions that we're now facing individuals aging with HIV. We were extremely envious of the UK's well-established HIV and rehabilitation clinical practice system. And Canada, uh, through the leadership of Quigger, was very fortunate to have a well-established research foundation. So I think it was at this time that we identified there was a real opportunity here to try to bridge these areas of research and practice between Canada and the UK. So we applied for a CIHR meetings grant. And in 2009, there was a small group of us that had the chance to go over to London. And Will so graciously hosted us here. This is the rehab gym at Barts in the London. And that's Patty Solomon facilitating there. And the goal of this meeting was to really start to establish an international collaborative research agenda that would address research priorities in HIV and rehab by first establishing partnerships, uh, and then identifying some priorities that we might move, want to move together with uh, and move forward. Through the fortune of Quigger and funding from the Public Health Agency of Canada, we've been able to sustain this collaborative through uh, amount of coordination funds that keeps us sort of binded together as a collaborative. We meet about quarterly via teleconference uh, and in hearing about what people are doing in HIV and rehabilitation research. We're now comprised for about, over about 40 members. There is a website up and running under the Quigger website there. And I really think um, we've been able to strike that successful balance of being a collaborative. So people have the opportunity to develop partnerships and, and share what everyone's doing, but it's not onerous to be a part of this collaborative. And I think we've tried to kind of maintain that along the way. 
Here are a couple of examples of some of the research that's been able to move forward through the Kirk Collaborative. The first is this a policy analysis of access to rehabilitation services for people living with HIV in the UK and Canada. That was funded by the Centre for REACH, uh, and Jackie Gahagan is going to be presenting on that uh, tomorrow at the forum. And we also have the HIV Health and Rehabilitation Survey, where there's a group of individuals, and you'll hear from Stephanie Nixon later on today, about establishing a profile of disability rehab services use and living strategies among people living with HIV in Canada. And that's been funded by the CIHR. So Kirk is growing. I think it's definitely evident we've been able to develop some new partnerships, and they continue to build. One in particular to mention is the Rehabilitation and HIV Association, or REVA for short. And this is a network of rehabilitation professionals in the UK, many of who are being represented here at this meeting. And they're engaged in supporting education, research, <laughs> and best practice in HIV and rehabilitation. And they're fully affi affiliated with the Brit Brit British HIV Association. And the uh, chair here is Will Chegwin. So hopefully we'll get more chance to uh, interact with the REVA members here today. But we've also made other international collaborations beyond Canada and the UK through recognizing, again, the similarities that also span other countries, such as the United States and Ireland. Uh, so we actually see the opportunity for Kirk to really grow. And that's been demonstrated here. So that really led us to now this meeting. The International Forum on HIV and Rehabilitation Research. So after four years since we had that first inaugural Kirk meeting, we all have been gone off and been trying to address these research priorities in many different ways. We thought, what a great time to sort of come back together face to face and sort of ask ourselves, where are we now? What have we been doing? What have other people been doing? And can we sort of translate this research coming onto the field? And in doing so, have a discussion about what some of the new and emerging priorities might be for moving the field forward. So the overall forum goal is to translate research evidence, knowledge on HIV and rehab that's been generated not only through Kirk and Quigger, but many of the other individuals and uh, participants who are here today. You'll see that the forum agenda, it's a jam-packed agenda, I know. I take responsibility for this one. <laughs> but we have great speakers in store. Day one, day two, we have plenary sessions in store. As I mentioned, that we've arranged six research evidence panel sessions that align with each of those quicker research priorities in HIV and rehabilitation. We have a combination of oral presentations, but also allocated time for some interactive discussion. And as Elise mentioned, the Quigger Annual General Meeting is going to be tomorrow between 11.30 and 1.30 p.m. to talk about where the field is moving. And don't forget that this evening we have Quigger's 15th Anniversary Celebration and Award of Excellence, of who the recipients of the award are Dr. Patty Solomon, McMaster <laughs> University, and the organizational award, Coxida. So some of the outcomes that we hope to come out of the next two days is not only learning about new knowledge, what's going on in HIV and rehabilitation research, also to develop new clinical and research partnerships. And it was so exciting to see some of that happen last evening um, and start to generate. And I hope that dialogue will continue over the next couple of days. I think it's also an excellent time for us to think about what the new research priorities in HIV and rehabilitation are. We have a mechanism that involves sticky notes and the chart paper there at the end of the, end of the room that uh, we'll tell you about. And the idea is there's a lot of people that are here today, which we love face-to-face, -face, but in order to sort of allow some further translation beyond today's sessions is to develop a knowledge translation and exchange library where we'll be able to house the videos from the next two days uh, on the Quigger website for people to uh, log on and view. We're also going to be pre preparing a detailed final report and an executive summary um, that goes along with the meeting as well that will include where these new research priorities are and as well a summary of the evidence that's uh, been presented to date. 
Also want to mention, and a huge thanks to all of the speakers for sending in your key messages and key publications associated with your talks. This is a huge part of these KTE materials and really helps to establish, um, uh, I think, to help translate and we'll sort of keep that involved and up on the Quigger library as well. So, a big thank you for coming. A huge thanks to Quigger for allowing us to join forces in this meeting. I think it really has raised the profile of this event and this meeting to be able to um, join forces with Quigger's annual general meeting, award of excellence with Kirk for this particular special year. We look forward to the discussions and the forum ahead. So thank you.